Hi there, this is Lori, and I'm going to show you how to do some basic clustering. The questions that I've been hearing are about making some basic clusters, not very large clusters, but clusters, um, how to make them look fairly realistic, and what to think about when you're building a cluster. I don't pretend to be a master clusterer, <laughs> um, but I'm not a cluster phobic either. So I do like to have some clusters on a page, usually just a few small ones, but every once in a while I'm happy to build a larger one when my layout seems to need it. And I have watched a bunch of videos on building clusters and done a lot of different tutorials that that people have um, have hosted or have have done that, that have been very helpful to me. So I'm going to go through some of the basics for how I cluster and hopefully that will help you out a little bit. The kit that I'm going to use is Magical Scraps Galore Feeling Frosty Kit. It's a fairly new kit and it seemed to fit the weather that I'm sitting in right now with snow and, and cold and uh, my feet are frozen. So I'm going to use this kit. Not that I think it'll warm me up at all, but uh, just because I'm, I'm feeling the cold. To start with, you want to think about the base. And I will typically pull over some ribbons and I look through my kit. I kind of do an overview looking through my kit, finding some ribbons, some base pieces and I'll grab those and pull them over. So I'm just pulling those onto my page from the Windows folder where I keep them. And since these are going to be base pieces and closer to my piece of paper, I don't want to put a heavy shadow on them. I just want a light shadow for now. Some of them I may very well end up putting a heavy shadow, but I'm going to start out with a light shadow. Now I'm just working on a plain piece of paper, a, an empty project basically. When I typically do this for a page, I'll work off to the side. I don't work on the page because I find that's too distracting to my eye when I've got a layout going on. I just know that maybe I want a little cluster right here or I need a longer cluster for along the bottom, but I'll pull off to the side and that's where I'll work. But for this demonstration, I'll work right here on my, my white empty project page. To begin with, I'll just shift things around a little bit and I'll tilt some of my ribbons so that they, they don't sit right underneath. I don't think I need both of those, this one and that other blue one, so I, I uh, just deleted off the other. And I think I like this bright pop of red going on. And this one looks like a really nice base piece. So I might do something like that with it underneath. Now, before I start putting in greenery, and I really do like to have some greenery, some leaves or, or something else to, to use as filler, and of course some flowers and maybe some snowflakes and things, before I do that, I'm really going to study and, and work with my ribbons. If you were really scrapping on a piece of, on a, uh, on a project, on a page, if you had actual ribbons there, you might have them kind of tangled up in each other. So what I try to do when I'm clustering is to give it a realistic look that I don't have one ribbon on the bottom and another ribbon on top and they're just both laying there. In order to do that, I do zoom it up considerably so that I can really see what I'm about to do. And I find places in the ribbons where it would look natural for them to twist over or under each other. So right here we can see that there's some natural twists that we can work with. I'm going to highlight this one on the bottom. I'll go to cut, custom, cut out a straight path. And what I'm going to do is cut right here along that that fold that the ribbon already had. Now this kind of gets in my way, so over to the right 
if I click on visualization, I am working with A5 for this, and I'm going to lighten that up a little so that it's not as distracting. I can still see those little squares, but it's not nearly as distracting. And now I'm just going to grab that entire piece, and I say keep both areas cut. Once I do that, this little piece that I cut away, I'll put up on top of that red ribbon, and look how now they're twisted together a little bit. That's a far more natural look, because that's what would happen if you had two pieces of ribbon on a, on a paper. There's another spot right here that would work the same way, so I'm highlighting this, custom cut out a straight path, and I'm going to kind of hope that I'm getting the right part that I need. Every once in a while I don't get exactly what I need and I have to go back and cut it again, but we'll give this a try. And it's still keep both areas, so I'll cut, I'll grab this piece and pull it just above the red ribbon. And you can see that it's not perfect, but that's okay, because when I put my flowers and, and snowflakes and whatever else I use on, I'll just make sure that I cover that up. Or I could take my bow and move it over if I like that look. So when you do this, think about the parts that might go over and might go under. Now for this area, let me move that bow out of the way. For this area, this could very well be underneath the brown ribbon. So I'm going to highlight now just the red ribbon and cut out a straight path. And I've got some nice lines there that make it pretty easy for me to do that one. Keep both cut. And now I'm going to take this red piece and go under. And look how it twists around back and forth. So it looks much more natural. Now, since I've done that, I'm trying to decide how I like this. And maybe now I do need to go underneath and bring them back together like that. So it's just a matter of playing with it, getting how you think it might look good and that's a nice starting point right there. Now as I'm looking at this cluster more I'm realizing that I think I want to see a little bit more of this kind of ivory sort of ribbon sticking up above so I just shift that some. At this point I'm going to start pulling in some flowers and some other things and we'll fill this in a bit. It's not going to be a very big cluster. I don't want to put a bunch of things on it, and sometimes what I'll do is I won't grab the greenery yet, so I'm just going to grab some flowers, some of the, um, the items that will need a heavier shadow on them. So I'm grabbing those, My computer's working a little bit slow. Well, apparently it's uh, only going to pull in that one. Let's try a few more. I'm going to go back and get this one, and I'll go to Format and put a heavy shadow on all of these all at the same time. And from here, many times I'll take them all and just shrink them closer to the size that I want and I'm going to start placing them. Now here's another trick about when you're clustering. You don't want everything on top of the base pieces. You want to pull some down and put them underneath. And as you fill this in, you also want to make sure that you use some larger things and some smaller pieces. So as you're, as you're doing it, resize some so that they're tinier and keep some that are larger. Now if you end up using certain things more than once, let me move this down a little bit, if you use certain things more than once, so I'll copy, paste, paste, you will want to make sure to turn the other ones and put them in different layers Put, them, put some underneath, put some on top, maybe with a few of them, pull them out so that they're a little more separated. 
that makes it look much more realistic and it gives dimension to what you're doing. So you can see that I've tucked and turned and moved them around into different um, different locations up and down in our over on our element panel. trying to decide exactly where I want this flower. That will probably move to a different place before all is said and done, but I'll leave that there for the moment. And now I'm going to go find some greenery. Now this particular kit has this little pine branch, which I really like, but I'm also going to grab a couple of snowflakes. And there's a string here that I like, and then these little sequins. As I look down through, there is this other set of greenery. I'll pull it over, but I'm not entirely certain that I'm going to use that one. And then there are these little branches. I really, really like these little branches. So over they go. Now you'll notice that when I pulled all this on here, it's kind of messy all over the place. I'm just going to use my elements panel to grab them all. Put a light shadow for the moment. I may change my mind on that, but just for the moment. And I'm going to grab any one of these squares and just resize those some so that they're not quite as large and in my face. And now I can start working with individual pieces. Let me get that leaf out of the way for a moment. These sequins will definitely go under, and I'm going to copy paste those so that I can stretch them out a little bit. And now I'm going to go um, to arrange and move to back, and they'll just move right on back for me. This string, I love using strings in my clusters, especially ones that have the little uh, bows on them like this one does and I will move that down. Now before I am finished with this I may end up cutting out pieces and putting them into different layers like I did earlier with those ribbons. This is the part where I really have to think about how the whole thing looks as a whole as opposed to um, making decisions with certain little pieces. So I'm going to wait a little bit before I decide. Now this little pine branch, obviously I'm going to copy and paste and there'll be a lot more of them, but I think I'm going to tuck it right behind that bow, so I'll move that to the front, and then this snowflake here will move to the back. So one of the other keys is half hiding some of your pieces. If you, if you move them way into the back so that they're tucked and hidden a little bit, it also helps it look a little bit more realistic. I've copy and pasted, and this one I will resize, and you see I twisted it around a bit, and now I'll just move this flower to the front, and I think we need one more for balance, so I will rotate it the other way, and I think maybe it will sit over here, and this time I'm going to take that one and drag it back not all the way back, but behind some things and in front of others. That's coming together pretty well. This branch, I think I'll work with both of these branches together. And I'm going to kind of offset them from each other. I will group and then because I like my aspect ratios locked, I'll go ahead and lock those. And as I tuck this one, I think I'll go ahead and put it behind that green branch. So I'll just group those and ungroup. And now I can just pull it right below. So you can see pieces of it, but you don't get that full-on effect, so it, it, um, it's not really in your face. It's a little bit more subtle. This one, 
I believe I'll tuck at this end. And now I'm going to go right on top of this ribbon. So I will just group and ungroup. And now there's just little bits of it sticking out. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Now this red flower just seems a little too much. So make that a little bit smaller. And yeah, I'm thinking that I really don't need that branch. I'm, I've got enough going on. This is a pretty good cluster the way it sits right now. This particular branch might be just a bit too large. And now I know I want some more snowflakes. Just two snowflakes really doesn't quite cut it. So I copy and paste it a couple of times. Here's my twist and make it smaller and twist and move it all the way to the back. I'll move this one to the back. Actually, I think I want it just over the sequins. So I'll pull it forward one and twist and I'll move that one to the back. And I think I'll just have it peek out a little tiny bit. Now these sequins, I'm just going to reposition slightly so that I can see them more at the bottom also. And there I have a cluster. Now because this ribbon ended up being at the very top and I only had a light shadow on it before, I'll go ahead and put a heavy shadow on it so I can, I can uh, make it pop out a little bit further. And I think that's looking pretty good, just the way it is. At this point, I would gather all of them together and I would group. And what's fun to do a lot of times with my clusters is if I know that I might use this later on for something um, uh, on a different page, I might want pieces of it or or uh, do something with it that way, I could keep it. I could just save this page and I could keep it to work from it because I can always ungroup it and move things around a little bit. But then the other really cool thing that I can do is while it's grouped together, if I say save selection, export to image file, and I go into my digi kits and into that kit, I can call it whatever I want to and save, and my computer really is working kind of slow, and I will just say save here, and look at this, now I've got my cluster saved in the kit, and I can very easily pull it onto a page and use it. It's just a flat ping now, it's not um, ab able to be ungrouped again, but even if I just wanted to use part of it in the layout, I certainly could. Hopefully that helps with clusters. Let me show you one other cluster that I put together quickly while I was getting ready to do the video. This particular one uses Simple Pleasure Designs into the Woods Kit. And you can see that there's a frame and I decided that I would cluster along the frame. So I have a bit of greenery, some, some grounding to it with the leaves. I've tucked in just a few flowers and I've got a perfectly usable cluster that I can add in a photo in the frame. And then if I choose to, I might want to take just a few pieces and copy paste. And I think I'll take this blue flower, copy paste. And then I have a tiny little cluster that I could also put on the page in another place if I wanted to. And it perfectly coordinates. Have fun with clusters. Practice. Play with it. Remember to put things in different layers. Copy and paste so that you've got um, matching types of pieces and everything will go together beautifully. Have fun.